So thanks, Mark. Good morning, everyone. As Mark said, my name is Helen Beale. I work for a company called Range 4. I describe myself as a DevOpsologist. I made that word up myself. It means that I study DevOps. Um, Range 4, we're about six years old. We help organisations mature their business and IT capabilities using DevOps principles. And today I wanted to talk to you a bit more about this concept of a DevSecOps engineer, what it means and why you might want to think about it as a role to have in your organisation. So I'm just going to start with a short history. I know um, Mark just did this and I kind of saw all the hands go up for security. Can we just do who's in dev again? And who's in ops? Who's got DevOps in their job title? Who works in a DevOps team? Okay, so that gives me a good view of where we're at at the moment. We'll talk some more about those concepts about having DevOps in your job title or DevOps teams in a bit. So I think it's worth spending some time on this short history. I'll try and keep it brief. As Mark said, we've only got 25 minutes. Um, so many of you may not realise that um, DevOps was started as a Twitter hashtag, so very much a grassroots thing, um, as it is in the way that it often evolves in an organisation. It often kind of pops up and mushrooms with people kind of going, this is a bit painful, there must be a better way. Um, Patrick Dubois was the gentleman that put that Twitter handle together um, when he started DevOps Days um, after going to a conference um, that this chap, Andrew Sheffer, was having a talk on Agile System administrat Administration um, that no one turned up to, just Patrick, not even Andrew, because he thought it was going to be so unpopular. But this is what started this whole movement. And as you can see, it's kind of developed as we've gone over time. So you'll see there um, some technologies coming through, so Puppet and Chef and Ansible and Docker and various different cloud technologies. You'll see the big analysts, the Gartner and Forrest, getting involved. You'll see the big vendors starting to get involved as well. You'll see things popping up like the Phoenix Project book. Who's read the Phoenix Project? Who's heard of it? So quite a few of you. So this is our kind of first recommendation if you're going on a DevOps journey or want to learn more about it, is to read that particular book. Um, you'll see last year we converted it into a game as well. So we have a card-based business simulation that helps people um, live and breathe the activities in the book. We designed that because we found lots of organisations were having problems getting their business people uh, understanding really um, what they're doing in IT, particularly when they're doing uh, agile or iterative development. So it's really uh, aimed to help with that. And in fact, I tweeted something the other day because I kind of feel like we're almost moving beyond DevOps into this situation where actually it's biz IT and that's the big kind of separation or um, kind of bridge we're trying to build. But as security professionals, you're probably noticing a lack of mentions of security on this short history as well. I think this year um, I was not alone as somebody that writes quite a lot about DevOps to in my kind of January 1st, what's the year going to look like, futurologist, trying to see what's going to happen. I was not alone in identifying DevSecOps or certainly security in DevOps as a really key driver. Um, it does feel like security has been a bit of an afterthought in the DevOps world. We'll come more to, back to that in a minute. Um, but I think that the time is now um, to really pick it up. So let's just um, move on. So our Phoenix Project, as you probably know, is written by a bunch of guys, Gene, Kim, George Stafford and Kevin Beer. Um, and published by Gene's sort of uh, publishing press called IT Revolution. They also published some other books. This is another one, The Art Business Value, um, written by Mark Schwartz. He speaks at quite a few conferences. He'll be at DevOps Enterprise Summit in London in early June, if you're going to make it along to that. And I really like this um, statement that he makes about DevOps um, because he talks about value delivery. So when people try and pin us down at range four to define what DevOps is, we say things like it's making better software faster and more safely. So a bit like... Um, Shannon's um, comment, sooner software safely, or safer software sooner. Um, so similar sort of thing. Um, and we want this fast cycle time, so we've got this speed, but really we're focusing on this value. Um, so you may have gathered from what I've just said that we're in this bit of the situation with DevOps where it does resist definition. Um, it consciously resists definition, so kind of the protagonists of the movement um, didn't want to put an equivalent of the Agile Manifesto up there. They didn't want to write a massive ITIL document. They wanted it to be free as a bird, if you like, to fly and become what it needed to be. But there is a, an element of what we're always trying to do is in terms of trying to cage it a little bit, to try and, um, try and pin down what it means in order to articulate it to people that are interested and help people harness it. Um, for something they can do for good in their own organisation. So, and, you know, there is a definition on Wikipedia and some people have had a go at putting a manifesto through, but if you think of DevOps as this kind of evolving thing, um, it's quite useful. Um, so a gentleman called John Willis, who's also quite famous in the DevOps arena, came up with this acronym. I prefer to it as an elevator acronym quite a lot. It's really useful if you're trying to explain to somebody quickly what the component parts 
of um, DevOps are that we're concerned with. So if you can see there, it's CAMS that we talk about, cultural automation, measurement and sharing. Um, some of you that are familiar with this acronym will have noticed that I've missed out the L for lean that Jess Humble put in later, and you'll see why um, I've done that in a moment. Uh, but what we need to do is think of DevOps. When we're thinking about this, what is a DevSecOps engineer? We need to think about security specifically in the DevOps concept through these various different lenses. Um, so more recently, I've been talking about this thing called the DevOps super pattern. So this came about because um, last year at DevOps Enterprise Summit, I was speaking with one of my customers, Lego. We were talking about correlations between something called Holacracy. Anybody heard of Holacracy? A couple of people. So Holacracy is effectively an agile organizational management system. Um, it's got lots of similarities with DevOps, things like it really likes self-organizing teams. It wants to distribute authority. It wants to get lots and lots of feedback from sensors that integrate with the customers. It wants those feedback loops. Um, it believes in things like continuous funding. So there are lots of similarities. Um, so I was talking about this um, back in, in Munich in December at a conference and also about this thing I talk about, um, which is a phrase I stole from a friend of mine, Jane Grohl, who runs the ITSM Academy and DevOps Institute, um, about DevOps being the harmonious polygamous marriage between Agile, uh, Lean and ITSM. So I was talking about all of this, and John Willis, the guy that came up with CAMS, came up to me after it. He said, you talk about all these four things, and I've got this three-legged stool that I talk about. So he's like, I'm concerned with the theory of constraints and safety cultures and learning organizations. And that kind of led us down this path of realizing that actually DevOps is becoming, um, if you like, a set of principles that are drawing from the maturity and convergence of evolution of lots of other um, thinking systems. Um, so I've put a little arrow on there, pointing at a safety culture, uh, kind of pointing out that's kind of where the DevSecOps engineer sits. So safety culture, compared to some of the other ones on that particular chart, is relatively new. As a, as a named concept, it came out of what happened in Chernobyl in the 1980s, um, but it's now becoming a thing that we're trying to wrap more discipline around. And in DevOps, it's very, very closely related to the one that's next door to it there, so the learning organisation, but we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. So you might not be able to read lots of this um, where you are back there. Um, but this is me taking um, these elements of the super pattern and layering them against um, the CALMS acronym, um, or the CAMS acronym, actually. And the reason um, you, I commented that the L for lean was missing from the way that I presented CAMS is that we put lean in on this matrix here. Um, so. You can see here what we're trying to do in terms of the safety culture, you know, the kind of thing, if we're talking about culture, with safety culture, it's kind of in the name, it's there already. Um, in automation, and we're going to come back to this probably several times in the next few minutes, um, we're really talking about shifting left and automating safety tests into your software delivery process as early as possible, so we'll come back to that. Um, in terms of measurement, most organizations we work with fall into one or two camps. They either have virtually no metrics or they have far too many metrics that are irrelevant. So we're trying to help them get somewhere in the middle to get to these metrics that matter and are very value-driven. Um, and in terms of the safety culture around security, um, this DevSecOps idea really is about getting better collaboration between the security teams um, and the rest of the IT business as people are traditionally um, structuring their businesses, but we'll come back to that in a minute. If you've read The Phoenix Project, you will be familiar with the three ways. So the first way is very much about flow, the second way about feedback loops, and the third way about um, experimentation and learning. So um, we are interested in flow in DevSecOps. We're interested in not having um, a bottleneck at security, and we'll come back to how security are often perceived in a minute. Um, and we are interested um, very much in feedback loops, um, as per Shannon's presentation that just preceded this one. So we're very interested in learning more about what's out there and what we can protect ourselves against. And we are very interested in experimentation and learning. And there's kind of, it's not really a conflict, but it's a balance between experimentation and learning um, and security. So I don't know if any of you have heard about this. It's been on the news quite a lot lately. Um, it's the Museum of Failure that's recently opened up in Stockholm. Um, it celebrates failed innovation. Um, we love celebration in DevOps and we love um, failure. When we do our assessments, we quantify people's culture and one of the things we quantify people on is their appetite for failure um, and their, um, whether they feel like they're dancing around the edge of failure, which sounds, if, you, if you've lived in a 
an environment that's kind of driven by fear, we can be very frightened of failure, but we need to um, embrace it in the spirit of innovation. Um, many of our customers, Lego again is a good example, um, they have an annual award that goes to the most failed IT project. Um, we like failure because it shows we're innovating. Um, if we're not trying things out, we won't progress. So some examples of things that failed just for fun. Uh, the Lady Bic pen. So we always needed pink pens, us girls. Uh, Google Glass might come back in a different form. Um, lasagna flavoured toothpaste. I think I can see why that didn't work. <laughs> so we like innovation. And they have this other thing that we say in DevOps, which is a really big point. Now, a few of you put your hands up earlier if I asked that you had De DevOps in your job title. Um, DevOps is a thing that needs to proliferate or profligate across an organization. Um, from human to human to human, we all need to kind of learn its best practices, its principles, and how to apply them to our daily work. What often happens in organizations as they start to adopt DevOps is that they'll identify one or two people um, to become that DevOps person. I had a conversation um, in, the, in the first kind of pre-coffee break this morning um, and heard something that I hear quite a lot is that that person often becomes like the miscellaneous bucket. It's like, we're not really sure who's going to do this, so we'll just give it to the DevOps person. Um, not the best use of that role, we would suggest. That person should really be um, a change leader evangelist that's taking the message, the DevOps messages out and spreading it across the organization. Um, so kind of dangerous to have as a job title. We don't really like job titles in DevOps um, in the same way that we don't in Holacracy. The reason we don't like job titles is they're quite restrictive. They tend to put us in um, kind of labelled buckets, which makes it difficult for us to do things like uh, self-organised teams and cross-skill. So we much prefer to talk about roles. So I prefer to think of the DevOps sec DevSecOps engineer as a role that people would handle alongside other roles rather than a specific job title. Um, just a quick word on teams as well. Lots of people um, stand up DevOps teams. A bit of an anti-pattern because you've just created another silo. It can cause some resentment in organisations. Why are they special? Um, why are they getting special treatment? However, conversely, it can work really well um, if it's seen as a transitional strategy. So kind of um, leading the charge, if you like, and spreading that evangelization around. Um, what we have seen work better is actually where companies pull together something a bit less formal. So a DevOps steering committee, for example, um, often people will identify individuals to take on each of the CALMS roles, um, start running up product backlogs and epics around those roles and start moving things forward that way. So getting back to the topic in hand today, uh, DevSecOps. Um, DevOps is not one person's job, it's everyone's job. So security. So security is a very specialised area. Um, the companies we work with, security teams, are often very separate from the rest of the organisation. Um, sometimes don't report into IT. Who works in a security team that doesn't report into IT in here? A, a couple of you. Yeah, it's, it's rare, unfortunately. We'd like to see more integration there. Um, and this causes problems, having this separation. So this is from Sonotypes. Um, DevSecOps survey that they ran just a couple of months ago. Um, and what you can see here is that quite a few people think that their security people are a bit of a nag. Um, those of you that have read the Phoenix Project will remember John, the CISO. Um, John's very difficult to start the book, then kind of has a bit of a breakdown. There's a lot of whiskey involved in a beard. And then he kind of comes back and actually he's kind of key to moving the whole thing forward. But it does often feel this thing about security being in a bit of an ivory tower, often saying no. We hear so many stories of conflict in organisations where security um, are really trying to cover their own kind of safety. So they're trying to make people do lots of checklists and uh, make sure that they're not at risk. Um, so it's quite often an unhealthy relationship. So what the DevSecOps movement is really trying to do is help these people work together better. So I talked about this relationship between innovation and failure um, and the relationship between then sort of failure and security. So we want people to innovate and we have to think of failure as something as a healthy byproduct of innovation. But we also need to provide systems where people, and when I say systems, I don't just mean a technical system, I mean 
a cultural and process system um, where people can fail safely, they can fail fast, often, and smart. So we need to have ways that we can preempt failure, that can help them know when something's going to happen or recover really quickly from it. So things like automated deployment systems that can almost instantly redeploy last good state, anything like that that can help make these environments safer for us. Um, many of you may have already also read the DevOps Handbook, also published by Jean Kim's IT Revolution Press in October last year. Um, not as good a read, in my opinion, as Phoenix Project, but that's pretty much because Phoenix Project is written by like a novel, so it tells a story, there's loads of characters, it's really engaging. Uh, DevOps Handbook's quite dry, it's the kind of thing you pick up and read a few pages or a chapter here and there, uh, rather than ploughing your whole way through it. Um, I really like this quote, though, and actually this has made it into um, a version of the DevOps Institute's DevOps Foundation course, the newest version, and I've highlighted a few things in there, um, and actually not for this conference, for many other things that we've done, because I think they're particularly important. And also, um, the main area that we see even the maturest customers that we work with really not getting to yet. Um, so we do need things like pre-blessed security libraries, and we do need security scanning tools that are happening early on in the process. And when I say early on in the process, I mean in the IDE. Um, in the CI and CD, so you're get actually breaking builds or refusing to deploy stuff through the route to live if there are artefacts in that code that doesn't comply with the pre security, security libraries. So I think where we are as an organisation, I was having this conversation with a couple of people at dinner last night, um, or as, as organisations, we have dedicated security professionals which are, are very highly specialised in what they do, and we need them, um, but we need developers and ops staff to be more cognizant about what security needs to happen. Um, so we need those teams to work together. So we need the security team, for example, to set the policies, um, identify the pre-blessed libraries and those sort of things. Um, but we need the developers to understand why that's happening, why those rules are made, and give them tools to help them develop things better. So there's the DevOps Handbook. As I said, written by Jean Kim, also um, co-authors of that were Jez Humble, the man that put the L into um, CAMS, and also um, John Willis, who I mentioned as the originator of CAMS, and also uh, Patrick Dubois, the originator of it all. So in the Devil's Handbook, there is this quote from Corey, uh, information security is a team sport, everyone needs to play, or we all lose. Just reiterating what I've already said, it's everybody's job. There are some maturity models out there. This is a cybersecurity model. Um, we haven't got much more time, so I'm not going to go into it in more detail. It is in the slide pack that you'll be able to download. I'm not convinced how useful this is. I'm sort of working on some other maturity models myself at the moment. Um, this is from Gartner. Um, this is from a paper on agile security administration. Um, and this is all about adaptive security. So um, really trying to set the basis for, and you'll see in the middle there, we've got the continuous monitoring. So really trying to get away from this, let's run a pen test every six months and then spend a few weeks um, looking over um, what the results are, but actually having things running all of the time. So we're getting um, a constant threat warning that's, that's real and not um, untimely. Um, part of the reason I wanted to do this talk with this topic today is we are about to launch with the DevOps Institute a new course, which is the DevSecOps Engineer course. Um, I think it's important that that's understood to be a role that people would carry um, alongside other roles that they would have. Um, maybe it's a role that the security people would want to do and a developer would want to do to make sure that they're speaking the same language, make sure they understand where their roles interact and who has what responsibilities and accountabilities. Um, this is just one of the slides from that new course that I wanted to, to put in here because I think it summarises quite nicely the key um, areas that we're talking about when we talk about DevSecOps. So first of all, this concept of shifting left. Um, we'll look at that again in just one moment. Then this co cooperation. So <clears throat> we're not in competition with each other when we work in the same organisation. Sometimes it does feel like it is, so, and that needs to stop. Um, automation, absolutely key. So some people use tools that humans have to read. Um, that puts a lot of waste and time into, um, the, into the pipeline, so we need to, to take those sort of tools away and get ones that give us uh, live updates. CAMS, we need to know what the, the measurable outcome is, and we need to transform the business, so this focus on value. This is another slide from the Sonotype DevSecOps survey that um, happened a couple of months ago. 
Um, I really like this one. If you look at it closely, what you're seeing is kind of the last time we run the survey and then this time we ran the survey and what people that self-identify as quite mature or very mature think they are in terms of shifting left. So if you just think of this as a kind of route to live, just ignore the one on the far left. But what you're seeing is the movement, if you like, a wave as people are shifting left. So you're seeing those pillars um, become bigger. And if we were to talk about kind of if we did the survey and we had the utopic response where we thought everybody was doing things perfectly, however you wanted to find perfect, we'd have most of this effort happening at the front end. Um, so this is the, the DevOps loop, and just to reiterate these points, really, we're talking about ideation to realisation here in the DevOps loop. It's a continuous release, the life cycle. We need to build security into all of it. Um, this is a little bit of a joke. So... Um, this started from a, an article I posted on LinkedIn and a gentleman called Magnus Hedmark um, started a bit of a chat with me about it and we started talking about this kind of iron triangle thing that we've seen in IT for a long time where there's been um, a, an assumption um, or a learned um, a learning perhaps that we can only have something that's low cost and high quality if it takes a very long time or we can only have something high quality and low cost um, if it takes a very long time. So um, what we're saying with DevOps really is that you can have it all. So we're calling it this golden square. So we're saying that actually with DevOps, you can deliver something that's really high quality, um, very fast and quite low cost. Um, and then we have this fourth element, um, which lots of people refer to as customer delight. Um, you call it happiness. Um, some people may be familiar with terms like hug ops and human ops. So really starting to talk about what our working lives look like on a day-to-day -day basis, whether we're facing burnout, whether things are really stressful, or whether we actually enjoy the work that we do. Um, and DevSecOps is very much part of, of all of that. So it's helping those teams work together. Um, so that is my presentation. So be DevOps-tastic. Um, thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to Helen, please. Thank you.